Patrick McCarthy. I am the director of the Bloom Cardiovascular Institute at Northwestern, where I'm also the chief of cardiac surgery. One of the things in particular that I developed uh, expertise on is valve surgery. Uh, I've done about 4,000 heart valves out of the 10,000 heart operations that I've done. Hi everybody, it's Adam with heartvalvesurgery.com. I'm thrilled to be with Dr. Patrick McCarthy. Dr. McCarthy, can you tell me what attracted you to cardiac surgery? Well, thanks Adam, it's great to see you again. How could you not love this job? I mean, I get a chance to go in there and fix these valves, replace valves, and you know, literally you save people's lives and they feel so much better afterwards. Dr. McCarthy, can you describe what mitral regurgitation is? For a variety of reasons, the leaflets, these two leaflets, may not hit together. And frequently what happens, they get pulled apart, and so they don't meet, meet in the middle. And then sometimes one part breaks and it goes right past it. That's a mitral valve prolapse. And so our job is to get the leaflets to hit back together the way that they're supposed to do. Dr. McCarthy, what causes mitral regurgitation? Um, there's a lot of different things that can cause mitral regurgitation. If you look across the United States, about 2% of patients have mitral valve prolapse, which is where the cords that are like strings on a parachute, the cords are too long. So you could picture a parachute where one corner of it, the strings are too long or broke jump out of an airplane that's going to leak a lot. Another major cause in the U.S., for instance, is patients that have had a heart attack. Those two combined are the most important in the U.S. Um, there's a lot of other reasons, and in a sense, just old age. Can mitral regurgitation be harmful for patients? So mitral regurgitation is definitely harmful. We grade it on a scale up to four, where four is the worst. So but when it gets to be four out of four, then it can really damage the heart because the heart's working overtime. The blood goes back and forth between the two chambers and over thousands of heartbeats, the heart enlarges and it gets weaker. Ultimately, if you don't treat severe four out of four mitral regurgitation, it can take the patient's life. Dr. McCarthy, does mitral regurgitation progress slow or fast? It can be either way, but people need to be aware in particular that it can be quite slow. It's not uncommon that we see people that will say, you know, I've had a heart murmur for 20 years, and so they've had mitral valve prolapse, it's not hitting together right. But then it can suddenly progress because they may break the string and on that cord, the string on the parachute, and so they can go slowly and then suddenly. Dr. McCarthy, what would you offer to patients who have been diagnosed with mitral regurgitation as your best piece or pieces of advice? So Adam, the thing that I really rely on is an echo. And what I wanna know is on a scale up to four, is it a four, is it the worst, or is it only a one and I'm not too worried about it? And only when you have that sequence over a period of years can you say, is it progressing quickly or has this been there for a long time, there's no big urgency to it. If it does appear that it might be a serious problem, it's worth going to your website and then researching it to try to find the experts. 